Good evening, everyone. It is Saturday, May the 23rd, 2020. It is currently about 7.45 p.m. Central Time. In fact, if you'll give me a second, I'll give you the exact time because I know that information is so important to you. It is currently 7.46 p.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from Abilene, Texas. No, I'm not coming to you from Victory Baptist Church. No, I'm standing in my study, and I, well, something happened to me today that I thought I would share with you because, well, I think it's kind of a humorous, a humorous story, and um, maybe you'll get some laughs, but I think I think there's a, a spiritual lesson in the story for you and for me, or at least put it this way. There was a spiritual lesson for me as I was going through it, and I was getting more and more frustrated and more and more irritated, and I was getting angry. All of a sudden, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. This, this, this is actually a very good spiritual lesson. So calm down. Let's learn the lesson here. And then after everything was over, everything was resolved, I thought I would grab the microphone, hook everything up here in my study and uh, hit the big red go live button and uh, go live on the air and share it with you. All right. So kind of a little... Saturday evening devotional thought that kind of came from the following, not the following story. It is a story, but it actually occurred. All right. Uh, this afternoon, if you keep up with everything we post and all of our li live broadcasts, you know that I was out at uh, Victory Baptist Church located in Ovalo, Texas. Uh, let me set my glasses down. Um, I, I was out at Victory Baptist Church in Ovalo, Texas, and in that area, the road that goes right in front of the front door of our church, they have been repaving that road. I mean, it, uh, that road goes a couple of miles until it hits uh, one of the main highways. Um, I don't know how long it is, but uh, I, that's, I always drive the back way to church, and this is the road I go down. So I've been watching them work on this road now for months, okay? And they finally started repaving it with this black tar gravel mix. I mean, it it stinks horribly. I mean, it smells just like tar, looks just like tar. It's what it is. They throw some gravel on it. And to make matters worse, it's been, you know, hot here in Texas, what, a couple of days ago? I think this week was 100, 107. I think it got to 107. I think that was on Tuesday or it may have been last Tuesday. It got to 107. It was crazy. And whenever that happens, I mean, they, they kind of completed the, the road work. I mean, it's all down. It's all been repaved. It's got that black tar gravel, but it's just, it's still really new. And so when it gets hot, you can kind of walk as soon as you, well, if you pull up at the church and kind of walk in, you can just smell the tar. You can smell it. But once it gets hot, hot and you walk out the door of the church and look at the road, it's this, I mean, it's liquid. It's turning liquid. It's like liquefied. And it's getting everywhere. It's just, it's a mess, right? And because of how our church is, you know, with our church is in the middle of nowhere, um, right, right in front of our church, if you walk out the front door to the right, there's a stop sign. And I guess a lot of people, they drive up there and instead of stopping at the stop sign, they just want to cut right across our parking lot and then hit the highway. And, and I guess that's where they, didn't, they don't feel like they have to come to a complete stop. I don't know why they're in a hurry. There's nowhere to go. You're in the middle of nowhere. But a lot of people do it. A lot of big trucks do that as well, because they don't want to have to sit there and stop at that stop sign and try to turn. So they'll just cut through our, our property, which, okay, whatever. I don't care. But because of this tar, what is happening is it's getting in the parking lot where the church is. All right. Now, that's not really much of an issue because obviously we haven't had anyone there other than me going there to do live streaming and, and do live, you know, episodes for my podcast. Uh, no one else has been there because of the COVID-19 situation. So today, um, you know, I've, I've been in the church. I heard, uh, you know, a lot of cars driving by, wasn't paying much attention. Um, I opened the front door um, to the church and started packing everything up and I could smell that tar smell. I could, I could just smell it. I was like, oh man, it gives me a headache. I'm like, ah, can't wait till this gets back to some kind of, uh, you know, gets back to normal so we don't have to smell tar here. But you know, whatever, maybe I shouldn't have been complaining because I'm supposed to do all things without grumbling and complaining. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm just going to be honest. I was doing a little bit of complaining. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't being spiritual. All right. So I get everything uh, ready. I walk, 
Uh, I walk it to the, I take the two bags. I have a book bag and I have the computer bag where I carry the computer back and forth. The laptop, which is how I go live. I, I put that in the, in the passenger seat. I, I brought all of my notebooks, my Bibles. I put everything in, in the seat. And I'm like, wait, I need to go back into the church and get the microphone. I'm going to take the microphone home just in case I get an opportunity to record tonight. Oh, look at that. That, that, it all worked out perfectly because that's the microphone I'm talking into. So, but when I, when I walked back into the church and started, started walking back out, I was like, what, what is wrong with my shoe? It's like something is stuck on the bottom of my shoe. So I put the microphone in the car, got ready to walk around over to the driver's side. And I'm like, what is going on? And I lifted up my shoe and I had this big like clump of this star. Now, sometimes that happens. The bottom surface it's happened to me a couple of times out there. The bottom surface, I can just kind of grab onto it and just pull it. And it comes right off my, my shoe and it's no, it's no big problem. It's, it, there's no issue. But for some weird reason, I lifted up my shoe. I saw it. I grabbed it. And as soon as I grabbed it, it just like tar just began to like drip all over my hands. And I immediately grabbed my other hand to try to, to try to stop it and try to wipe it. And the next thing I know, both hands were covered in black tar. And I was like, what do I do? What do I do? So I'm sitting there trying to peel it off my hand, trying to, and I'm like, it, it's not working. It's not working. I'm like, it's stuck. So I, I got, I, I found some gravel and some dirt and I started trying to rub the dirt on it and to try to get the, the, the tar to come off and it would not come off. And I'm like, oh no, what am I going to do? So, so I'm sitting there next thing you know, I put my hands down uh, next to my pants and I'm like, oh no, 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 no. I got tar in my pants. I'm like, oh no. And then, and then everything, like I, 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 I was trying to grab the, the car keys. I grabbed the car keys. They had it all over because I needed the keys to get back into the building to try to see what I could do. And I'm like, oh no. I, and then I couldn't find the keys. So then I'm trying to reach in my pockets to my pants to find my keys. But then I'm getting tar all over the place. I'm like, this, this cannot get worse. It can't get worse. So then I'm like, oh wait, there's a plastic spoon left in the car where someone went out to eat. And I'm like, I, I can use that to try to peel off the tar. It literally broke the, the plastic spoon. I'm like, this, this is not working. How am I going to get home? I mean, both hands were covered in tar. I'm like, what do I do? And I'm like, I can't find my car keys. I, I don't know where I put, a, put them at this point. I'm like, okay, wait, if I can't find the car keys, I can't drive home. With the way my hands are, how am I even going to drive home? I can't get back into the church. What do I do? So then I, I started looking around I'm like, okay, I think there's a place, there's like a, a water hydrant thing behind the, uh, behind the church. And I could try to go over there, but for some reason I could not get it to turn on with all the tar on my hand. And I'm like, this is not good. I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere. And I'm like, I, I, I can't pick up my iPad and try to text someone because I've got tar all over my hands. I'm in the, I'm just yelling, what? This day can't get any worse. Obviously, I was not doing all things without compl uh, complaining and grumbling. I was, I mean, in fact, I was getting irritated. I was, be forget irritated. I was ticked off. Okay, let's, let's just be honest. Okay. So I, I keep looking around, looking around. I find the keys. I'm like, I dropped them somewhere. They were like knocked halfway under the car. So I crawl under there, get the car keys. I'm like, okay, go back into the church. So I go try to get back into the church. I get into the church and I'm like, okay, Let's go to the sink and try to wa to 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 wash this off, and it it wasn't coming off. And I and we have paper towels, so I'm trying to. And the paper towels are just ripping. So now I've got tar with paper towel all over my hands, and I'm like, this 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 can't be happening. This this can't be happening. I'm like, okay, all I can do is try to lock everything up. So I locked everything up, and then I got back in the car, and I'm like, okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to try to drive just like using, uh, you know, like uh, up there by my, my arms. I'm going to just try to drive you with my arms and the, and the very bottom part of my hands. I'm going to just try to drive that way. I'm obviously not safe, but what am I supposed to do? So I finally get home, finally get home. My clothes have tar all over it. My shirt, which was pretty nice, is probably pretty ruined. Um, I'm like, this, this, this is horrible. So I, I literally get out of the car. I leave the door to the car open. I'm, I get into the house and I'm trying with all the, I, I've got hot water I've got every, and tar is not coming off. And there's this soap that my uh, daughter had. I don't know what's in it. I don't know what it's called. 
Uh, but I grabbed it. And as soon as that, I'm like, okay, it's starting to come off, starting to come off. And right now you can kind of tell there's still marks of tar on, on my right hand. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, if I, if I rub it, some of it will kind of come off maybe. Um, I got fingernails that look horrible. So, so for the most part, you can tell something happened, but it, they look pretty much back to normal. They look pretty much back to normal. Thanks to whatever was in that soap. I don't know what was in it. I remember when I walked into the house, I was like, uh, hey, Google, because we have a Google, you know, uh, speaker. Hey, Google, how do you get tar off your hands? <laughs> right? And so she was like, uh, according to the following website, and she started giving me all of these instructions and you need soap with this, you know, with this inside of the soap and it will help you do it. And you got to soak it. You got to do this. You got to do that. And I'm like, ah. so I don't know if the soap my daughter has, has that in it, but it, it worked and it got it off, but it was an absolute mess. And so I, I can't wait till the road gets back to normal. But as of right now, when it gets hot like that, it just turns into a liquefied tar gravel mix. That's it stinks and it gets everywhere. It's just an absolute, it's, it's, it's a nuisance obviously, but when, when you get into a situation, you know, now you're literally, you know, destroying your clothes. You're trying to dr drive a car. It's, it's just, it goes from a nuisance to a mess to causing some possible real problems. Now, now I, I'll be honest with you. When I finally, during, I think when I was trying to get my hands clean after I got home and I was trying to get my, uh, my hands clean, I was, I was, I was ticked off and I was mad, but somewhere where I was washing my hands, all of a sudden it hit me. What a great example. What a great example is this entire situation? Because I, I can almost, I mean, I, 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 if I wanted to gamble, I could probably put down money and win a bet here. But I am pretty sure that every person listening to me, spiritually speaking, has found themselves with spiritual tar, with sin on their hands, right? They, there may be a situation where sin is involved, a situation where, where spiritual failure is involved, but somehow sin is there. Sin, spiritual, moral failure. It can be a big sin. It can be a small sin, but it is sin. And your hands are covered in it and you are aware of it. You, it's not like some, some situation where you're not even aware of it. You know that you've got it on your hands. You know that your hands are covered. You know. And in some cases, we begin to try to say, okay, what can we do to fix this, right? Okay, what do I need to do? How can I fix this? How can I make this better? How can I get out of this situation? Okay, what can I do right? I mean, I've already done wrong, but what can I do right? And then we, in a sense, start trying to get the tar off. We're trying. I mean, man, woo, I got to get, I got to get. And next thing you know, wait, it's on my clothes. Wait, it's on my pants. Wait, it's on my, it's on my shirt. Wait, it's all over my car keys. Oh no, it's getting inside my car. Wait, Wait, okay, now it's here. And next thing you know, oh, now it's it's hurting my family. Oh no, now it's hurting my church. Oh, and next thing you know, it's like, I, I, I keep trying to clean it, but it won't go away. It, it won't go away. And we try and we try and it just seems to get worse. We seem to be making a bigger mess. And then finally we realize, wait a minute, I need something outside of myself. I need something else to help cleanse this. I need something else. And then we may be reminded of a scripture. First John, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Are you familiar with that passage of scripture? I'm pretty sure you are. Now it doesn't say wash, but it says cleanse, which carries the same idea. First John I'll read it to you word for word from the King James. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We've all been there with tar covered hands, okay? We're just, and we're like, and no matter what we try, we can't get it off. It, it, we try this, we try that, we, we try everything. We, we may be covered in it and it's causing all kinds of problems. It's causing problems in our life. It's causing problems with our, with our thinking, with, with guilt, with shame, our sleep, 
our relationships, and we may go to a counselor who says, well, you know, you really shouldn't forget, you shouldn't feel bad about that, or, or we listen to the world, and they're like, hey, well, you know, that's not really that bad of an action, you shouldn't worry about it, and, and, and we try to justify it, and we try to make excuses, and we try everything, and it just gets worse, and it just continues to spread, and the situation doesn't get any better, but then God's word says, wait a minute, if you confess, if you confess He not only will forgive, but cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And this idea of cleansing, this idea of washing, it's it's a a theme that comes up in a number of places in the Bible. You probably know this one, all right? You probably know this one because it's very famous, very famous. Psalm chapter 51. Psalm chapter 51. Psalm chapter 51. Now, if you know this psalm, this is the psalm where David is confessing, please note, confessing all of the tar all over his hands. Now, some people will say, well, the only reason he confessed is because he got caught. Who cares what it takes to make a person realize they've got tar all over their hands? If they truly will confess, it truly will turn to God, there can be a cleansing. And look what uh, look, look what uh, David says in this psalm, Psalm chapter 51. After all of the sin, I mean, his hands are covered in tar. And remember, he tried to fix the situation, remember? And he, he committed adultery, she ends up pregnant, and the next thing you know, he's committing murder. All right. So when he tried to he tried to cl- fix the situation, it just got worse and it got worse and it just spread the tar everywhere. Psalm chapter 51, verse one, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Listen to this. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. The only way you're going to be washed. The only way you're going to be cleansed, the only way the tar is going to get off your hands is when we come and confess it to God. Not making excuses, not trying to to wash it ourselves, just saying, Lord, I've done it. I'm guilty. It's my fault. It's no one else's fault. I'm responsible. Don't even try to make an excuse. Even if there is more to the story, just own it, accept it, deal with it. Now, and, and listen, Everyone else may may say, that's that person with tar-covered hands. For the rest of your life, everyone around you may say, tar-covered hands, tar-covered. That's, that's the guy with the tar-covered hands. That's the female with the tar-covered hands. Doesn't matter. God promises to wash us and to cleanse us and to remove our sins as far as the East is from the West. He promises that. So David comes and confesses and he is forgiven. All right. Now, what people always want to do is, well, he was forgiven, but there were consequences. Okay. If God gave him the consequences, God gave him the consequences. You're not God. So you don't get to put consequences on other people. You get to say that they're there. They've been cleansed. They have been forgiven. Their sin is removed as far as the East is from the West. There's, there's another passage that you may know. There's another passage that you may know. All right. Uh, Ephesians. Ephesians, all right? Ephesians chapter five, we read this. Ephesians chapter five, starting at verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Verse 22, Ephesians five, verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Now, there is a washing. I want you to hear this. There is a washing that occurs in salvation, right? There's a washing that occurs in our initial salvation. When we come to God, right, then we are washed, we are cleansed, we are declared righteous, right? Our sins are washed away, all right? So there's an initial washing. Then there is a washing of confession when we continue as we live our our Christian life. You're going to sin, I'm going to sin, you're going to sin, I'm going to sin. We need to confess. There is a cleansing that comes from that, and there is a cleansing that comes from the washing of God's word. God's word washes us. 
and cleanses us. That is something that continues. We have an initial cleansing, an initial washing that happens in salvation, where I go from an absolute guilty, tar-covered sinner to being declared righteous, being declared holy, and I'm being washed, in a sense, positionally speaking. I am declared righteous. I'm covered in righteousness. I am covered in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's the initial washing, all right, that happens in salvation. There's a positional aspect there. Practically, then as I'm living out my Christian life, I do sin, but I confess that, and then I am washed and cleansed. From the guilt of that, I'm washed and cleansed. And then there is a washing of sanctification that happens through God's word. God's word, the more I spend time with it, it's washing me, it's cleansing me. But trust me, I cannot get the tar off my hands initially before salvation. I have to trust in the righteousness of Christ. I cannot get the uh, the tar of, of sin off my hands and off my life uh, based off my normal way of living because I'm going to continue to sin. And the more I try to fix it, the more I'm going to mess it up. So I need to confess it. I need to confess it before God. And then there is the washing that comes from God's word that tries to help sanctify and help me grow and change as a Christian. These are the washings that we talk about sometimes in scripture, and they're all explained and used sometimes in different ways. We see kind of an example of this. Let me see if I can find it. It's in the Old Testament. Let me see. Let me see here. Um, I don't want to tell you which where to look. Uh, give me one second. I may have gone too far. All right, let me see here. I'm looking, I'm looking. Um, yes, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter one. Isaiah chapter one, obviously uh, Israel's sins is being laid before them. I mean, they are, they're, I mean, God is upset with them. Look at Isaiah chapter one, verse four, a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. Why should you be stricken any more? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart faint. All right, they are, they are covered. They are, they are tar covered. They are in sin, all right? Then look at this, uh, Verse 15, and when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. When you make prayers, I will not hear you. Your hands are full of blood. I mean, they, they, are, they, are, they are guilty. They are, they are filthy. Their hands are covered in tar using our illustration. But look at what happens in Isaiah 116. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings. From before mine eyes cease to do evil. And then look at verse 18, Isaiah 118. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. God is the one who can cleanse us. God is the one that can remove the tar. God is the one that can do that. And he does so again, positionally. We, our hands are still covered, but we are, we are seen through the eyes of God as being righteous and being pure and being holy because of the righteousness of Christ. That's our positional. Nothing actually changes on my hands. They're still covered in tar, but God sees my hands as being pure and right because the righteousness of Christ is accredited to my account. That's my positional cleansing right? But then the practical cleansing begins as I'm, as I'm trying to live out that Christian life. I'm like, oh, I've been declared righteous. Praise God. Thank you so much. I'm going to try to live my life. Wait, I fall. I come before God and I confess it. Then that begins to cleanse me of that practical guilt that occurs. But then the practical cleansing of my practice and of my daily life comes through the washing that comes from God's word. God's word is what washes us. It's the soap that helps remove the tar. It, we, in other words, we can't do any of this cleansing our own. We can't do the salvation cleansing on our own. We can't do that. We can't create enough righteousness to, to cover the tar. We need an imputed righteousness. 
We can't fix our daily sin. We have to c- confess that before God. He can cleanse us. And if we're going to be made pure in any practical way, we need the word of God. It's what washes us. Now, how much tar do you have on your hands tonight? I, I had physical tar. But man, spiritually, I always can look and go, man, I got to get this off. I've got to, I've got to do this. Just remember, you can't do it yourself. And you, we could throw in there that a part of this cleansing and getting the tar removed is also confessing our faults one to another. Sometimes we need to, to go to another person and confess those sins. Someone who's trustworthy, someone who will help wash your hands, not someone who's going to go shame you and destroy you but someone who who will handle themselves in the spiritual way to try to help you, cleanse you, and restore you. The goal of, 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 of getting the tar off your hands from the Christian perspective should be this. Sometimes I think Christians are more like, it's weird how sometimes I think Christians think about tar-covered hands. We want to say that person had tar-covered hands. They're always going to be known as the person with tar-covered hands, and we're going to make sure that we focus on what what, you know, what, what should be taken away from them and what, you know, what consequences they should face for the rest of our life. I think we spend sometimes within Christianity more time wanting to lay down the consequences and making people pay and reminding everyone of people's tar covered hands. than we are, I think we're more worried about that than saying, Hey, come, let's go, let's reason together. Let's go to God. Let's confess this. Let's deal with this. Let's get that tar off your hands. Let's restore you so that you can be used by God and you can warn everyone else about the tar and not to put their hands in it. And you can help and you can help others. We need to always try to be help, help each other get the tar off our hands. And sometimes you have to point it out. Sometimes, you know, you may see someone sitting there going, Hey, there's tar all over your hands. Let's, let's, let's get this clean. So tonight, just uh, just a, a, a you know impromptu devotional thought. Just imagine me with tar all over my hands, standing outside of Victory Baptist Church, and I don't know how hot it was. It was hot, and the wind was blowing a hundred miles an hour. I know a little hyperbole, and I'm standing there, and I'm like, "What do I do? What do I? I've got I've got tar. I can't drive. I can't call anyone. I'm I'm stuck." And sometimes spiritually, guess what? You may be standing on the side of the road going, Lord, what do I do? I can't fix this. And every time I try to fix it, I get tar everywhere and I'm causing more problems and more pain. Stop, reason together, confess, go to God to be cleansed, to to be cleansed before him, to have your sins forgiven and removed, and then start the practical step of getting that tar off your hands through the washing of God's word. There's a lesson in this. Hopefully, you will benefit from it. All right, I'll stop right there. You can email me at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. That is newsif at yahoo.com. Now, I hope this sounded okay. Um, I didn't even bother to do a test. I just hooked up the mic and just said, hit the go, hit the big red go live button. Because, well, I just got the, I'd gotten the tar off my hands and wanted to tell you about it. So please, 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 please listen. I want to make this. I don't know. I don't know. When I do little devotional messages like this, I always imagine that this has got to be relevant to someone out there. Hey, I don't know what you've done. I don't know where you've been. I don't know how much tar you may have tar from the fingertips all the way up to the elbow on both arms. You may have tar covering all all of your body. I don't know what you've done. I don't know how bad it is. I don't know how scandalous it is. I don't know how shameful it may be. I don't know how embarrassing it may be. But I know this. God is the only one who's going to help you clean clean up that tar. First, go to him in private and confess it. Own up to it. Acknowledge it. Deal with it. And then you may have to let other people know about the tar. And then hopefully you can find people who will love you, who will help who will help you get the tar off your hands and get you back on a position. But listen, just running from it, just hiding from it, just ignoring it, it's not going to go away. The tar is going to continue to spread. It's going to continue to spread. Just, there's no point. Don't run, don't run from God. You've got to run to, he's the only one who's got the soap to cleanse you and it's the blood of Jesus Christ. He's the only one who's got the thing that will cleanse you. Don't run. 
Now, now I know Christians may want to be throwing rocks at you. Don't, just ignore the Christians throwing rocks and go to Jesus. Now, he's going to tell you to get up. He's going to say, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. And you're going to have to, to learn how to live out that life. And other people may want to, you know, mark you with a scarlet letter. But you just, you got to just live out the Christian life in spite of what sometimes other Christians say or do. Because the Bible promises a cleansing, a forgiveness, complete forgiveness, complete forgiveness. God's mercy and the blood of Christ is always greater than our sin. Always greater. Now, yes, if you've broken a law, there are legal consequences. And yes, there can be a situation where you've done something that may prohibit this or that. But at at everything in our power, we want to restore people back to a position of usefulness. That is what we want. And we want them to be cleansed. We want them to walk in a, with a freedom where that weight and that tar is off their hands. And they don't have to, to live with that anymore. All right. Email me, newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. Everyone have a great night. I'll be doing live streaming, probably starting maybe as early as 8 o'clock, 8.30 in the morning um, from Victory Baptist Church. Then I'll be doing Sunday school at 10 a.m., the morning worship at 11. And then I'll be back at the church probably around 2 or 3 in the afternoon to do live streaming most of Sunday afternoon, then do the live uh, uh, church service at 6 p.m., and then that will be it. Uh, By the time all of those hours of live broadcasting are over, I'll probably take a break Monday and then be back Tuesday. Um, Not this Sunday, but the next, the following Sunday, I think it's um, like May the 31st, I think it's like the last Sunday in May, uh, we will be back to having normal church services at Victory Baptist Church. Uh, so we're going to take a week. Af- we're going to wait one week longer than everyone else just to ensure that there's nothing new getting ready to happen. I don't want to open it back up and then be told a week later I have to close everything down. I don't want to do that. Um, so we're going to wait a week just to make sure, and then we'll get back uh, to hopefully having church as normal as possible. So just pray for all the churches. I know m- most churches are going to probably be opening tomorrow. Pray that everyone is safe. And that the church hopefully could get back to doing what the church is called to do. All right, we'll stop right there. Uh, Thank you for listening. God bless.